Hello, family. Welcome back. I want to talk about something that caught me off guard. It's one of those things when you're kind of sitting through and looking at all of this end time stuff happen and it's fulfilling prophecies in the Bible as we speak. It's interesting times. I've always had this sense, or for most of my life anyways, that the return of the Messiah is very soon. And sure enough, we weren't wrong. My dad's been telling me some uh, a date that has been in my mind for a while, and we haven't put that out there yet and gone public with it. It does relate to the message video we've shared in the past, and we need to address again because it goes way deeper. I'm believing that my dad might be onto something. My wife also came to the same conclusion on her own, and so it's very strange that the end might be much closer within a few years than most of us had anticipated. And you can see with everything speeding up that that's probably the case. Now, I'm sure most of you have seen this Abramowitch commercial here, or you've heard of it being deleted after it had like 24,000 plus dislikes to maybe, you know, not even a thousand likes over here, because everyone knows in the truther community who this is, what she does and stands for, and they were exposing that, and Microsoft took it down. They said later on that, oh, there was a bunch of conspiracy theorists saying we promoted Satanism, and there's no evidence that this woman here is a Satanist. Well, that's a lie, and if that was true, if there was no evidence, and there's a bunch of conspiracy theorists, why take it down in the first place? But they did, and they stand behind their actions of taking it down. But after that commercial was taken down, Someone shared this picture here of these two Satanists right here. One's more of a well-known figure that most people know of right here, the Rothschild family here. And the painting behind them wasn't as well-known. I hadn't seen this until this picture surfaced. And the title above this picture in the post that someone shared said, Here they are standing in front of Lucifer summoning his legions. That's the name of that painting. But something about that painting stood out to me. It was, perhaps it was the way the face was illuminated, and I looked at it a little closer and almost had like one of those flashbacks to where have I seen this before, and the Statue of Liberty popped into my mind. Everyone's seen this iconic statue, even if you're not from America. It's very famous. It's, it's world known, and its origins have been said, from what I was told when I looked into this years ago, that the maker of the Statue of Liberty was wanting to use the pagan goddess Isis, or Ishtar, to make a statue of that pagan goddess and bring it to America. And that was, okay, I could understand that, you know, mystery Babylon type of stuff. Makes a lot of sense. But I looked really close at this, and some things came to mind, not just the fact that these two look nearly identical, that there may be something a little deeper than the whole Ishtar or Isis story. There could be something a little deeper than the surface level research. And that's the conclusion I'm drawing, and you'll see why here in just a second as it relates to the word. But these are almost copy and paste images here, even the biceps. It looks like they went to the same gym, the same muscle definition right here. You can see the face, the eyebrow structure, the eyes, everything, the even just the posture. But it gets really weird when you look at the feet of the Statue of Liberty. Even the feet have the exact same pose as they do in the painting. You have the right or the uh, left foot forward and the right foot sort of tippy toeing right here like you're pushing off of it. And if you look at the front foot, there it is, left foot forward. And the right foot, right there, just like it is in the painting, you can see that. But the chain, the chain is what set off sort of the light bulb <laughs> reaction where something is up. Something's up with this chain, and it has nothing to do with America breaking free from chains of all that nonsense. It's biblical. It's right here. Jude chapter 6, and there's other verses that relate to this, even like in the book of Enoch, you can find stuff like this. But it says, And the angels which kept not their first estate, 
but left their own habitation. He hath reserved in everlasting chains under darkness unto the judgment of the great day. Hmm. Bound in chains. These angels. And then you have Lucifer summoning his legions. Starting to make a little bit of sense. This crown. To me, I see that sun worshiping, those sun rays right there. There's a lot that goes into that. And if you if you read Ezekiel chapter 8, and it shows you God is showing Ezekiel exactly what he despises the most. And one of those was sun worship. That's a whole other video in itself. But it talks about people worshiping the sun. And he's going through and showing him different things that make him hurt and sad and angry and one of those was people worshiping that sun at all and weeping over tammuz which my wife and i are finding out goes very deep it goes back to um nimrod and after he died tammuz allegedly came from the sun born of a virgin you know the stuff that they start to take with their pagan holidays and and apply that towards the messiah a lot of those lies and and then you see people like the Zeke guys creating these lies that, oh, that the Messiah is based on this because of all of these connections. And none of it really holds up to scrutiny. My brother did a really good video on that. You'll have to watch that if you don't know what I'm talking about. That goes pretty deep itself. And um, But that right there in the chains, to me, is a lot deeper in meaning and goes way beyond the pagan goddess Isis. I'm not going to end with this. You're going to look and see what's on the head here. And even the hand looks extremely familiar. You see the two fingers right here pointing upward. Seen that before. You'll see that here again in just a second. But there is that eagle on top of the head or on top of the hat right there. Very familiar because we bear that mark on our currency. And we're about to get into that digital currency possibly the ones mentioned recently that you guys have seen videos about the cryptocurrency, the digital currency with the no joke triple six right there in the patent number. Lots of people have done videos about that. You can look into that if you want. I'm not going to go deep into that. That's another visible prophecy being fulfilled right before our eyes. It is to come. We can't, you know, sign petitions and stop that. You can't stop the prophecies from becoming true. They will come true. That's how we know the word is true and we can trust it. Okay. I'm going to get a little freakier. This is something from a few years ago I'd looked into and never said anything about, but seeing these two little digits up here pointing into the air reminded me of this. And I just wanted to put that out there because I'm going back to that ancient map. I had someone translate some of the things that were really freaky, but um, we talked about this in that video. I just haven't fixed the audio on that. I'm going to have to redo my part because it sounds horrible, but um, the whole Baphomet statue and how there would be a half-human, half-goat type creature, whether it be spiritual or real, I was looking into reproduction with my biology students, and they were asking me some weird questions, and we got to talking about chromosomes and how those are important when you are of the same species and why you're able to breed certain species with others and why, you know, a dog and a cat can't come together and produce offspring, all sorts of different things. And I started thinking, which organisms have the same chromosomes as humans? And what do you know? A sable antelope was the one that popped up as having 46 chromosomes like we do. And the mix between these two looks a lot like this. I mean, look at the snout on this guy, and then look at the snout on this little statue here. Even the ears. Everything is it's just eerie. When I made that connection, I was like, wow, <laughs> this is freaky. This goes pretty deep. Um, definitely something to think about in terms of how they could do certain things. I'm not saying that that's what this is exactly, but it's an interesting connection and just something I wanted to share because I was mind blown when I looked that up and saw this animal and sort of put two and two together here. And I didn't share that with anybody because I knew they would think, hey, this guy's crazy talking about uh, Baphomet in school. Can't do that. So I only talked about that here, and I've shown this to my wife. <laughs> but uh, definitely crazy, and I know you guys will probably understand where I'm coming from with 
some of this stuff because the reality we have been given is totally different than what's been going on behind the scenes for generations. But those chains right here are symbolic, I do believe, of what's really going on with the evil ones being bound. Okay, They kept not their first estate. And now they are in chains of darkness. Chains broken right here. They're trying to put out some subliminal stuff. And yes, I used to be very patriotic and loved looking at the Statue of Liberty. I've been to it and I've never really thought anything bad about it back in those days. But there is a lot going on with these powers of darkness and wickedness in high places. But exposing them is not enough. I'm finding out that they are very devout and they are working hard. We cannot sleep on just knowing what is out there. We have to fight in the battle. And the Father has made it to where we are in battle and we have everything we need if we seek after it and we keep on that full armor. The armor is important. You have to understand what it is. You have to be ready for what's to come. Major deception is coming. This stuff we're seeing now with the little virus is baby stuff compared to what tricks they are going to pull here very soon. It may not be a very easy reality to live with. I was um, talking to my son about this and just saying, you know, I hate that in his youth he's experiencing a lot of this stuff, but he's ve he's very wise for his age and he understands what's going on. And uh, we need to come together and start sharing the word a lot more. I'm trying my best to do what my wife says and study. It's been a little hard lately with what's been going on, but I thank you guys for your prayers. My brother thanks you too. We were talking about the peace we are feeling and just knowing that all of you are praying for us and just doing what it takes to help us get up and do the work that needs to be done to be ready and to have our families ready and not just be content with knowing some truths about what's going on. So thanks again. We'll see you guys very soon. Take care. Stay safe. God bless. Like and subscribe. I love you.